I hate to show you all this. It's quite a mess. I've been working and not cleaning up. So I think clean up's next. Anyway, if you want to stick around for this video, we are going to tell you everything I had to do to get my pedo installed. So stick around. As you can see, I got the, the dyne on with the angle of attack. That sounded really good to me. Um, and I did get the kit, so I'll have to flare these and hook those little ends on. I got a flare kit coming for 37 degrees. Holes drilled so that I can hook this up to it. Had to squeeze this in the vise to get it to fit. Um, and uh, I didn't get the heated. Now let's see what else. Oh, how I'm gonna figure out exactly how far this goes out because these are different is I measured out I'll show you in the the connection to the strut is right about here and they show it here and I don't want it underneath it I don't want it under the strut so I'm putting it in the bay right about here now how I'm figuring out the distance back is they show in the plans that from the center of this out is uh, 80 millimeters. And so what I'm going to do is minus that half that they're showing to the center, and that makes it 65, 65 millimeters out. So that's where I'm starting on my little bracket here. This is the, the back touching the spar with the 15 millimeters minus off makes it 65 millimeters. Put this here. That's where the back is supposed to be. And the front of the pedos are right here. So I'm just lining up the new pedo right here and coming up with a distance that this is supposed to be to the um, center spar. And that'll give me the exact same distance Hopefully it'll be in good air. And if you'd like, you could cut yourself something like this, just a little jig. It helps. These things are so awkward for measuring up and for uh, drilling holes and getting things in place and finding out how big a, how thick a wedge you have to make because that back turns up quite a ways. So that was very helpful. Also, Hated to do it, but I'm going to put the pedo system in complete when I lock up the system because I don't want to have access holes to try to get into. And one of the difficulties is going to have the table in the way. So that's what the hole's for. And we've got plenty of room to pick it up. And the thing's going to look like Swiss cheese when I get done with the airplane. Cause so that's just one of the difficulties that you got to go through if you're going to keep complete things. And then when I put it on the rack over there, the pedal will have to be sticking out because I don't know if it'll clear the other wing, but that'll be a good problem to have to worry about. So got the noodles on finally and uh, yeah, onward and upward. This is the plan so far. I have to do everything on a step ladder because my arms ain't long enough to reach over this sheet metal. This has uh, the Dynon has a little notch here, I think for a spar and another plane. And so I'm going to build this bracket so that it goes over that and fills that gap. And I checked the rotation of the curve. There's quite a curve here. Um, and to fill that, I need to put a bracket in the back to take up some of that. That's going to go there. This is going to go down through, connect with that. This will go in front, take up the gap. And I will have an angle bracket here tying into the side uh, nose ring. I just thought of something really cool. Once this is all together, uh, yearly inspection, I can take the end of the probe off, set it aside, put a scope up in there, and look over here and inspect the nuts and bolts. Cool, huh? Just started putting the uh, doubler in and uh, the rear bracket that is filed at an angle so that it uh, matches the curve of the back of the, the pedo stack. Anyway.
Well, I drilled out the pattern to the back side of the stack and riveted, or riveted in there and marked that because that is real tight to the stack. So hopefully I'll get a better, a better hole. Yeah, that's what I signed up for. It's nerve wracking though to set everything and then now I got to start nibbling it out and sand her up. And you'd think I'd be getting used to that by now, wouldn't you? It's so nerve wracking, cutting a hole in a panel. Now it's just a matter of upsizing. I want to, some of those, well, all of those are going to be fours. And I only had two upsized. The rest of them all upsized, deburr, prime, and put this in straight up. That's going to be permanently put in. And like I said, if I drop this out enough to fish a camera up in there, that'll be handy dandy. Now that I have all the parts made, I've got the doubler, the side bracket, the extension, and the back wedge. I'm going to try to lighten them up some. Like this, I can cut down quite a bit. And then the next step, primer up. But there, I got it all cleaned up and scotch bright and that where the little bracket's gonna go priming's next. Now I gotta get out of the fumes and just go into the house and wait for this to dry up and we can start assembling. All dried up and cleat coat in place. Fits really good. I hope it's strong. Well, I can... you know what I like about this is that there's like a, cert a perfect balance between researching, deciding, taking all that time agonizing and finally doing and the doing part is so good that now you can move on to more research and decisions it's just this ebb and flow like I was saying that feels good I love the process I'm starting to get used to the idea of not being able to just work all the time now I've got to make a decision am I going to put the sensor in the tank on the side so I don't have to drill a hole in the top and have more potential chance of leaking or am I going to put it in the top cut the hole that I can't put a plate on because I don't think there's room for nuts and I don't like the idea of putting a hole in the structural skin without putting a plate I don't want to double back tape a plastic piece on top it's just not strong enough but I'm I'm really thinking it through I'm going to do some measuring and see if I can't if I could come up with a way of putting a metal cap over the hole and bolting it down so that it would add some strength to that maybe even put a an extra retaining ring in there maybe just an extra retaining ring and then plastic on top and flat rivet it you know countersink little rivets all the way around maybe that will make it strong enough Maybe I should talk to Roger about it, but, and that's what I'll probably do. As you can see, I put the pitot tube outside where the strut attachment is, and um, it maybe is a little more prone to hit your head on it when you're walking around under there. But um, I like the idea of it, me not having to think about 
putting it all together, measuring and, and putting it together, then I like to get things done, as I said. And this is a good compromise. It's close enough to it. It'll have a great big red thing hanging from it. And uh, yeah, it should be good. And I've seen other ones out there. We got the measurements right, so we know the tip is exactly the same from the leading edge as the factory uh, pedo tube. And now that you can see that I've had to reroute, change how the wiring is going to go on the back. I've got some brackets. That'll be in the next video. I'll show you how I'm routing them. I'm staying out of drilling holes uh, from where the doublers are. I'm staying out of there completely if I can help it. And that's why one of the reasons I, I put it outside of it. So, well, we're going to end it here. Uh, thanks for coming along. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. And if you see anything that you think I should change or you don't like and you want to discuss it in, please put it in the remarks down below. People that watch these love to read that stuff, and so do I. Um, even if it's negative. I mean, if it's too negative, forget it. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to get back to doing these next. I, I only got two finished, and that'll do it for today. Hey, thanks for coming along, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Kind of hard to see, but all riveted and inserted, but not installed.